Hello, my name is Laura Gonzalez, and presenting with me today is Kevin Keller and Katherine Walker. We are also representing Daniel Beckman, Andrea Murray, Christian Roan, Grace Wright, and Henry Goodall in this presentation. Millions of deaths occur each year due to cardiovascular disease. Electrocardiogram is one of the major ways that we can monitor heart health. Typically, cardiologists and doctors direct patients to wear devices such as ultramonitors and event monitors in order to record their ECG over the period of a couple of days to several weeks. However, these devices are expensive, bulky, and often uncomfortable for the user. They require the use of wet electrodes which call for gels and adhesives. These wet electrodes may fall out of place during normal, everyday activity. Additionally, they are very uncomfortable because they require wires to connect the electrodes to the Holter monitor and even monitor device so that even just a little movement can cause the wires to become disconnected from the electrodes. There are a few devices on the market that attempt to that attempt to alleviate some of the issues faced by the standard Holter monitors. One option is an adhesive patch that the patient could wear for a few days up to a few weeks while it's monitoring the heart. After that time period, the device needs to be sent to a lab to be analyzed for potential issues in the cardiac signals. This delay could pose a serious issue if a cardiac emergency were to happen. Implanted devices are another option for cardiac monitoring. They are designed to be implanted for three to five years close to the heart and on a daily basis stream the data back using a base station. The issue is the cost of the device and the required surgeries. This is a far more serious option than wearing a patch for a few days. Our system was part of a two-semester undergraduate senior design project between four electrical engineering students and three textile engineering students. As part of the specifications, the ECG electrodes needed to be dry and seamlessly integrated and comfortable towards the user. Furthermore, the connections between the ECG electrodes on the garment and electrical circuitry needed to be modular so that the electronics could be easily removed for the washing of the garment. All packaging needed to be durable in order to provide accurate and continuous monitoring while remaining comfortable and hassle-free for the user. In our system, the shirt collects the ECG signal from the user and then wirelessly transmits that information to the Android device via Bluetooth Low Energy, or BLE. The Android app receives the ECG data, performs additional digital filtering, saves the filtered data to a file, and then plots the waveform in real time. Saving the data to the Android device gives the user the option to send the ECG information directly to his or her cardiologist for further analysis. Wet electrodes use gels to lower the impedance between the electrode and the skin. They are typically secured to the skin using adhesives, which may be uncomfortable for the wearer. Oftentimes, wet electrodes cannot be reused or worn continuously. On the other hand, dry electrodes do not require the use of gels or adhesives. Dry electrodes may increase noise, but they can be seamlessly integrated into a t-shirt. In our system, we use three silver woven conductive fabric electrodes. We were able to maintain good contact with the skin and reduce noise by incorporating two elastic bands that the user will secure around the abdomen using Velcro. The electrodes are strategically placed in order to minimize noise due to motion artifacts. The two differential electrodes are placed just below the pectoral muscles and the ground electrode is placed at the same level as the belly button. Our custom hardware fit in a small enclosure on a shirt. We designed a small PCB that contained an RF Duino module, which is a combined Bluetooth low energy and microcontroller module, a power supply, and analog device AD8232 ECG front end chip. The front end chip sent the ECG signal to the microcontroller, where it was then sent via Bluetooth to a custom Android application. The final prototype consisted of a tight fitted shirt with textile electrodes located on the inside. The electronics are placed in a compartment on the side of the shirt. Wires come out of the electronics and go through the shirt through fabric channels. The wires are then attached to the dry electrodes through conductive epoxy. This setup allowed the shirt to obtain an ECG signal through the electronics and communicate it with a cell phone app over Bluetooth Low Energy. Here is a video of the shirt in operation. So this is a working demonstration of our t-shirt. So Katie's wearing it right now, and as we can see on the Android application, you can see her heartbeat moving. So could you move a bit? 
There's very little distortion. So we have the three fabric dry electrodes located here, here, and here. And as we talked about earlier, the wires feed into the box of electronics, which are located on the side of the shirt. And the board is inside of the box. One of the challenges in getting a readable ECG signal was removing the noise. Noise can be seen as interfering signals which are added to the ECG, causing it to be unreadable. This comes from many places such as power line interference, nearby electronic devices, movement of the textile electrodes on the skin, and electronic signals coming from muscle activations. One way to mitigate noise is through filtering. The filtering we did on this project allowed us to remove frequencies unrelated to the ECG, therefore making it more readable. During the creating of the shirt, filters were tested in MATLAB and coded onto the Arduino. Our system uses an infinite impulse response bandpass filter, which was found in a Pam Tompkins paper. Bluetooth Low Energy has limited transmission capabilities, so fitting all the data we needed was a big feat. The output of the analog front end is fed directly into the RF Duino. The 10-bit ADC on board the RF Duino is sampled every 5 milliseconds in order to achieve a 200 Hz sampling rate. Some preliminary digital filtering on board the RF Duino is added to remove the baseline drift and apply high-pass and low-pass filters. The ECG waveform is essentially mapped from a 0 to 5 volts range to a plus or minus 1 volt range. Once mapped to this range, an 8-bit integer representation of each sample point is determined, that is, from 0 to 255, with 0 being equivalent to minus 1 volt and 255 being equivalent to plus 1 volt. Since BLE has a maximum packet size of 20 bytes, each 8-bit sample point is placed respectively into the 20-byte packet and sent to the connected Android device. This allows us to effectively achieve the 200 Hz sampling rate required for the use of algorithms such as Pan Tompkins and use BLE as our transmission method. We think we are one of the first to successfully stream ECG signals in real time over BLE using a t-shirt style or form factor with dry electrodes. Future work on this system could include adding an ECG diagnostic tool to the Android app. The tool could determine if the ECG exhibits symptoms of common arrhythmias or cardiac issues. Once a cardiac issue is detected, the app can alert the user with a pop-up dialog accompanied by a vibration of the Android device and give the user an option to disregard or forward the information along to his or her cardiologist. There are many algorithms for diagnostic tools that can be used in order to detect potential life-threatening emergencies such as heart attacks or AFib. These algorithms often analyze specific parameters in the person's ECG and check to see if they are at healthy status. The current device works well, but a few changes to the mechanical design would allow greater usability. The battery and electrode connections could use some changes to allow more seamless operation by the end user. We would also like to add a rechargeable battery to the system. We would also like to play with some different types of experimental electrodes. The current silver fabric electrodes work well, but different types of electrodes might perform even better for our applications. Thanks for watching our presentation. Our system was a great success and we had a great time working on this project. 